Howdy folks, Kevin here. This is a type of video I've been wanting to do for quite some time. Basically, it's going to be me going through some Stack Overflow questions. Uh, some of them I've answered myself, some of them other people have expertly answered, and I don't need to chime in, which is wonderful because that means less work for me. But I want to highlight the questions because I see these questions quite often, and I think it'd be great to have some quick uh, video to watch, just going through various questions that you won't think to ask yourself, but uh, are really good to know and can save you uh, if you come across that specific scenario. With that, let's get started. The first question is how to select the last element with the same class name. So they have multiple elements, all with the class name of, in here, example, and they want to get the last element. Now there's actually a couple of different ways to get this. They tried using an array notation with negative one. What they needed to do, well, first, this is not an array, this is a single element. You would need to use double dollar sign for it to be an array, uh, to get an array of elements. Um, unfortunately, that doesn't work. That'd be great if that worked. But again, they would have to use double dollar sign for that. But what they can use is this last child pseudo selector. What last child does gets the last child of that type. So here we have paragraph. If you have multiple paragraphs, it will get the last child of it and it will color it lime. You can see here we have multiple paragraphs. So this will get colored lime. This will not because it's not a paragraph. It is the last child of this div, but it's not a paragraph and we're selecting paragraphs. Here's a slightly more complex example with multiple last childs. So you have this li and this li, they're both last childs. And last child is talking about, this is the parent, these are the children, this is the first child, this is the last child, this is the parent, these are the children, first child, last child. You see, these are not colored red, they're colored blue. Even though they're inside the last child, this li takes over coloring it blue compared to that one. Kind of interesting. But this is how you use it in your code. Use the single dollar sign, use your class name selector, and then the pseudo selector, you tag onto that, no space between those, it just goes right on and now you can get the last child of class example. There's some more complexities to last child to pay attention to, but uh, I don't really wanna get into that. I wanna keep this short. So let's move on. How to stop a WebDriver IO script if any expect assertion fails. So say you have an expect assertion here and uh, it fails. So for whatever reason, this uh, did not have a value of ERV they want the whole test suite to stop running and just quit. There's a built-in way to do that called bail. And it's funny when I say bail, uh, a little bit of my Texan accent comes out, bail. Uh, also when I say whale, whale, what do you know? Uh, if you want to run, if you want your test run to stop after a specific number of test failures, use bail. Uh, defaults to zero, which means that it will not stop no matter the number of failures. But if you put like one or two, it'll stop after that number. Unfortunately, they had something else come up uh, where it wasn't failing. I don't know what's going on there. I asked them to open an issue because like this is the answer. If that doesn't work, then you need to open an issue or something like that. It's, it's outside of the scope of Stack Overflow. But bail is really nice to know about because it can help you with debugging tests. Like say you have a long test suite and you have some intermittent failures, you can just say, okay, as soon as one fails, I want it, I want it to stop uh, and I can get to debugging it right away. Next up, WebDriver IO throws an error after an NPM version update. So basically they updated the versions in their dev dependencies uh, for WebDriver IO and now they get this weird error. So I highlight this because this is actually something that can happen to you. You update it. And the simple answer is um, build the project from scratch or really remove the node modules directory and the package lock file and then uh, reinstall it. What I mean by reinstall it, I should be clearer, is let's look at 
all the contents of a basic WebDriver IO project. The main thing you have here is node modules. We can look at node modules. You see it's got all of our node modules in here, including all the WebDriver IO stuff we want. What we want to do is basically reinstall all our dependencies. What I'll run is rm-rf. This is on Mac. On Windows, it'll be, I don't know, something else. <laughs> Sorry, you have to look that up. Uh, node modules. So I'm going to remove the entire node modules directory. It's going to take a little bit of time. Um, they suggested removing the package lock file. That's not a bad idea. And then running npm install again. And it's just going to reinstall all your dependencies for you. And I think what happened here in this case is they updated the dependencies, only installed those updates, and it just threw things out of whack. It just doesn't... Um, Dependencies are tricky. If they get out of date a little bit, uh, it just messes up the system. So the simplest answer is just reinstall your dependencies. It takes a minute maybe, I, hopefully just a minute because I want to keep moving on with this video. There we go. Uh, but now we have a brand new node modules directory freshly installed and that can clear up some issues. In fact, I created an alias to run this command whenever I want. So I can just type npm nuke um, and it will run rm-rf node modules, remove the package lock, and then reinstall. That's how often I run this when I need to just debug. I created that alias. So again, one of those things that might pop up, you never know to ask the question, but when it happens, it happens and it's good to know. Next up, how to extend the timeout for browser.debug. This is actually um, something that I wish was a little bit better supported, but I don't know how it would be better supported. But basically, when you write browser.debug, it pauses the execution of your script, and you can do various things. You can uh, inspect the, the browser if you have the browser open. You can run WebDriver IO commands from the command line. Really helpful. But uh, what happens is you have a timeout, a test timeout that says, after 60 seconds of running your test, stop the test because clearly something has gone wrong because tests shouldn't take 60 seconds or three minutes or however long your timeout is. Shouldn't take that long to run. Well, when you're using debug, it's gonna take that long to run because you're debugging things and it takes time to debug. What it says is you wanna change the default timeout to be something longer. And they gave some examples, but it was a little bit off. Um, they needed to update this timeout. Each of your frameworks is going to have a timeout associated with it. So Mocha, it's called timeout. Jasmine, Jasmine is default timeout interval. And Cucumber is timeout. So the number is in milliseconds. So here that's 30,000 milliseconds or 30 seconds. In their example, they did 60,000 or 60 seconds. That's not going to be nearly long enough. So you're going to want something longer. Uh, something I've seen done is timeout and you put in the number of minutes you want so let's say I want to debug for 30 minutes just in case and you multiply it by the seconds so now this is 30 minutes in seconds and then you multiply it by milliseconds so this converts it into 30 minutes in milliseconds and this works just fine for putting in your uh, config so make sure you do that uh, one thing that I do is I also check process.env.debug. I can't remember if it's equal equal or not. So what I'll do is I'll say if there's an environment variable called debug and it's set to true, increase the timeout to this really long one. Otherwise use the default. And then when I run my test, I can say debug equals true npxwdi. And this will tell WebDriver IO, hey, we're going to be debugging this test, so up that timeout to be really long. And the last thing, question to go through, is how to make WebDriver IO type slowly in an input box. One of the good things about WebDriver IO is that it types super fast when you set a value, but uh, sometimes that can trip you up. Sometimes you want it to type slowly. 
um, for various reasons. But basically, you want to use browser.pause, one of the useful parts of using browser.pause. Usually, I say don't use browser.pause because people use it in the wrong way. But this is going to show using it in the right way. So as you see, they want to insert some value into an input element. And when they type it, for whatever reason, there's maybe it's like an autocomplete or something is interfering with just the regular typing. And so they need to slow it down. So what they do is they get their value. They convert it into an array. Then they loop through that array. They send a single key. Then they pause. Then they go through again, send the next key, pause. Um, they also could have done add value instead of set value. Add value adds on to the next uh, character, or adds on to the next. Yeah, it takes the current value of the input field and adds on a character or whatever character you you have adds on to it. You don't need to use browser.keys, um, but there's really nothing wrong with using browser.keys that I can think of. It should work the same. And then it will type out every half half a millisecond. No, I don't think that's right. 0.5 millisecond pause. That should be a 200 millisecond pause or a 0.2 second pause. Yeah, whatever. They might have started with something low and then changed that. Um, there is a bottom limit to how short of a pause you can run um, because of the fact that WebDriver IO sends commands through HTTP requests. Those take a certain amount of time, maybe five, 10 milliseconds. So setting like a two millisecond pause isn't really gonna do anything. It's gonna be longer than that um, in theory. Okay, those are the questions that we went through. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think. I will link to each of these answers, just all these links. I'll put those in the description down below. Um, and I'll try doing this again sometime soon. And until next time, have fun testing.